pew, pew, pew. Hello and bam, welcome bam, bam, to episode bam, 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 four bam, 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 of Two R Two Pass podcast. I am your host Juan yeah. Martinez, and Jacques Slade is to whatever. I don't even want to talk about it. We're just gonna keep doing. This is how we start the podcast. You just yeah. do. Yeah, we make faces, we do sounds, and all that <laughs> stuff. But yes, uh, welcome to the show, Jacques. How yeah. are we doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, the weather has cooled off here in LA, so that's nice. Yes. It's not a thousand degrees anymore. Yes. I should say a thousand. Yes. That's very hyperbolic. It was like triple digits. We were in the triple digits, and now we're in like the 80s, which is which feels like heaven compared to being like 109, 110 that we were the last few weeks. Yeah, right now it's like low 60s where I'm at, so I am in hoodie. We- it's hoodie weather. <laughs> Yeah, in a sense, yeah. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, for so I, good. I apologize for anybody who lives like in the East Coast or anything like that. When I say 60 degrees is like hoodie weather, they're probably like, how, what? That's barely nothing right. for us. I'm like, I'm a California yeah. person. I, I'm sorry. I apologize. I am definitely like in the 60s. I'm like, it's time to put on, it's an excuse to put on a hoodie at this point. So, yeah, yeah no, we're just going to have to do that. California all the way. I have, I have <laughs> no shame. No, not at all. Not at all. But uh, Jack, no. So, uh, what did you think of this week's uh, recording of uh, Hard Pass? Uh, I think it was good. Got a lot of good stuff. Um, co-writer, aka you, aka co-writer, uh, went a little ham <laughs> on some things. Uh, what are you talking we'll talk about? about? I don't know what you're talking a little about, bit, Jack. That we'll that right. we'll talk about a little later in the show. What are you talking um, about? But it was a, it was a good episode. Great perspectives. I think. Um, I think, and I think the. The thing, the cool thing about it is, I think a lot of people feel that way as well. So mm-hmm. I will, I'll, I'll be excited to hear what they think about the show and about that segment of the show because I feel like a lot of the things that we talked about are pretty universal. And as far as like the concerns, being upset, being not upset, like all of those things, I feel like kind of hit the nail on the head. So we'll see, we'll see how the uh, how people respond. I mean, you never know. Some people might be like, "No, I love it." This is what it's supposed to be. So we'll see. I am shocked. I would be shocked if there are people who are actually out there loud and proud saying, I love it. But I mean, you know, also wouldn't shock me as well. Because, you know, there are definitely like people who have been waiting for a long time and this is finally their chance. And hey, more power to them if they want to go pick that up. But, you know, for me, I just just so super disappointed as someone who's just been doing this and has been just into into that industry for so long. um, Yeah. Know the history of it and then for it to go the way that it did. Yeah, no, it's just a little disappointing. But, you know, I mean, hopefully people will, like, you know, these companies will course correct at some point and uh, kind of right the ship. But right now, they're yeah. kind of messing up, Jacques. But anyways, <laughs> before I do, actually, we move on to the show. Uh, we do, did mention it at the end, um, you know, because it is the Dreamcast's uh, 25th anniversary. It was this past yes. week. Uh, do you remember 9999, Jacques? Like, I um, don't remember that as a, I don't remember that as that day i remember the dreamcast coming out but i don't remember it as that day being a thing yeah i mean it it was definitely like a huge thing for me and my circle of friends back then it was like oh my gosh it was like sega's finally back the saturn wasn't great well for a lot of people the saturn wasn't great but the dreamcast was supposed to be the thing that was going to bring them back make them relevant and it was just basically two years and playstation pretty much uh murdered uh, the Dreamcast, which is Everything. fine. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Sega's still around. They're still making great games. But yeah. and I know you said like, oh, Je- uh, Juan might like, you know, make like a top 25 list. But I do have a top 10. I do have a top, top 10, 10 list. I'm just, okay. Yes, I do All have right. a top 10 list. I'm just going to name it right now. And then we're going to move on to the show just because I have to get it out of my system. So, all right. Number 10, Bangayo. Just look it up. It's a really good game. Number nine, Tech no, Romancer. No it's Rope. Robot fighting game. Robot fighting game. It's good I remember stuff, that. Good stuff. I remember Tech Romancer. Yeah. Number eight, NFL 2K. And if everybody yeah. knows what that is. Everybody. We, yeah. I wish 2K was actually back into football at some point. I think they're doing like a card game right now, but actual football simulation, I wish they would come back at some point. Hopefully they get the license back. Uh, number seven, Fantasy Star Online. It was one of my first experiences actually playing a game online. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, okay. it was actually using like the phone modem. So it was like, you know, dial up. So it was definitely yeah. fun trying to get online with those kinds of things. Yeah. Kids have no idea what I'm talking about when I say that. Yeah. Actually, like, when you make that sound. Online. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you make that sound, you're like, what are you doing? What are you doing, old man? 
56 what was it 56k was it 56k yeah, 56K? yeah 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 number six uh sonic adventure it was the first uh mm-hmm. 3d sonic game have great memories of it i know it didn't age well but you know it was at the time definitely um up there for me in terms of like memorable experiences uh number five nba 2k another one of those sports games that yeah. you know hey, it's still around today and um yeah oh, oh you know it's just one of those things that you just when you first see it and you're like whoa this is real life, even though yeah. now it looks like it looks it looks terrible now. But back looks then, terrible my, now compared to back then. Back, but back then it was mind blowing stuff for us. So you know, let us live. Yeah. Let us live. Uh, number four, Choo Choo Rocket. It was a uh, simple puzzle game, but I am a super puzzle game person, so I love those kinds of like you know you have to like think through some stuff. Don't uh, know that f- one. Mm, uh, not a lot of people do, but it's fine. Number three, Ikaruga. It's a shoot 'em up. It's a space shooter. Mm. um it was a japanese import you actually had to import the game buy from japan you had to like do a workaround in order to actually play the game like put a different disc first into the dreamcast take it out put that disc in in order to make it work so that was the old I days remember, when you actually had... I, yeah i remember we had to do that with the game i don't remember what games me and my friends had a game where we had to do that i don't remember what the game was you had to like swap well, I remember out like we had, yeah yeah, had to, yeah yeah so we, it, had, it had to be it had to be a game from overseas then, for oh, I yeah. imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In order or to make that stuff work, you had to do like a couple of tricks. I mean, with the PlayStation, I actually had to like learn how to use a soldering iron to like fix like a chip inside. And like, yeah, no, it's uh, that was definitely the days when you actually had to make that work. Nowadays, everything just works everywhere. But back just then, works, you had yeah. to figure out. You had to figure out those workarounds because they were definitely protective of that stuff. Uh, number two, yeah. Virtua Tennis. Um. It was just a really that. fun tennis game. Something about it just I just couldn't stop playing it. It was just one of those games. And it's fun multiplayer. It's fun to play with friends. And uh number oh, one, yeah. Marvel versus Capcom 2. The arcade yeah. game. And it was one of the first games that I saw that looked perfect. Um, you know, translated well to the home console. I did not enjoy the having to unlock every character. It took hours to make that happen. But other than that, it was a perfect conversion to the home, and it was very cool. And uh, also honorable mentions to uh, Resident Evil, Cold Veronica, and Soul Calibur, just because I couldn't figure out where I could put them in the list, but I just had to like shout those out. But yeah, Dreamcast, very out. memorable console. Never forget, yeah. 25 years. Yeah, no, good stuff, good stuff. That's awesome. Anyways, it's crazy uh, to think that it was 25 years ago. Gosh. Yeah, it's a little wild to think about, and I don't. I, I, I'd rather we not talk about like how old we are. But anyway, ah. <laughs> uh, moving on to the show, Jacques. Um, you have a uh, trip planned up, uh, yes. and you, you will be going to uh, China to uh, yeah, so check I'll be out gone, uh, Kyrie yeah. and Anta. So I'll be gone for a week. Mm-hmm. Um, probably when you guys are watching this, I'm already in China. My goal, and this is the goal, um, is to do some sort of like daily vlog every day. So if you guys are following me over on Instagram, then you'll probably see the Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat, honestly, is where all of that will kind of show up. Um, it's, it's exciting. I've never been in this capacity before. So this is kind of exciting. And it'll be, I'll, I'm looking forward to it and being able to share that experience with you guys. I think uh, people will get a lot out of it. I know a couple of brands have already done that. I know Jord brand went over, Curry brand went over. I think Curry is over there now, um, mm-hmm. or they're on their way back, something along those lines. So it's mm-hmm. pretty exciting, and I'm looking forward to heading over there. Yeah. So the purpose of your trip is to do, uh, you know, you're going to be there with Anta, and I guess yeah. Kyrie is going to be, Kyrie Irving is going to be doing his uh, China tour. And I yeah. guess he recently debuted a uh, new sneaker. It's the Anta Kai Tribe, which I believe he's calling it like a skate shoe, a lifestyle shoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I got to say, even before we found out about this trip, Jacques, I-, I was actually very intrigued by that shoe just because of the design of it and the fact mm-hmm. that it doesn't look like your typical, you know, like, you know, when you when you think about like, you know, when Nike did like their sportswear stuff for their signature athletes back in the days. Yeah. It was kind of in that vein, but it also looks... It looks like a drastic departure from that, at least for my opinion. Like the Kai Tribe really looks like a shoe that I just don't expect like an athlete to put together, you know. Mm. And, I, I and the fact that. that it's also a skate shoe, it's like it's transitioning into like you know Kyrie might be actually transitioning into other you know sports. Like if he's considering that a skate shoe, maybe he's going to have like skate athletes wear those shoes. And the other thing that I found intriguing about it is, I guess it's going to be priced at seventy dollars. 
uh, that's great, pretty cool. which is great. Which is great. Yeah. Like it opens it up to like a smaller, like a larger consumer base. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, of a Vans shoe, and Kai mm-hmm. kind of seems like a Vans guy almost. Like mm-hmm. even though he's with Nike and now he's with Anta, he seems like that that Vans style kind of suits his off court sort of feel. And mm-hmm. this shoe kind of fits inside that vein for me. At least it does for me. I, I think it's a great a great move for him. It looks completely different than the Kai One, which mm-hmm. is great as well. So it, there is some like separation. And it shows that Kyrie is willing to do a bunch of different things over at Anta that he probably wouldn't have been able to do at other brands because yes. of their other athletes in those categories. So him kind mm-hmm. of crossing categories like this sets a precedent for something that I'm sure other athletes have probably wanted to do, but weren't able to do Mm -hmm. because of, you know, other people, I guess, so so to speak. So it's great. It's great to see. It looks cool. They can do a ton of different colorways with this one and being priced at only $70, it make, it puts itself into a space where like anybody can get it. It's, it literally Mm -hmm. is like that Vans style shoe that can really open the market in a way that we haven't seen in a while, especially if it catches on. Yeah. And I love the fact that he debuted uh, debuted it during a live stream. Like we've seen kind of pictures of it like earlier previously from I don't know if he was like doing exhibitions and stuff, but he actually like put it showed it like you know on the live stream and showed it off to his fans and he said, "Hey, put it to, like you know uh put, create designs for it, like create customs of it and maybe we'll like you know do something with you guys." And I thought that was just a very cool thing of Kai to do was to like really connect to the audience. And find yeah. that way to like really bring the people in. And, you know, that's something like you said, you know, there are things that he wouldn't be able to do at like other brands, like, you know, maybe Nike or if he had gone to a different big brand, you know, they mm-hmm. might be like, hey, you know, we're not necessarily like looking to do that kind of stuff. But with Anta, it seems like he has a lot of creative freedom to kind of do what he wants. So sometimes I can bite somebody in the butt sometimes. But in this case, I think it might actually be ended up being a good thing for Kai. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna bite him in the butt. I think it's going to be. I think as time goes on, people are going to be more and more open to, to Kyrie and the Anta one, and then this Kai Tribe shoe. I think people will will open up to it a little bit more as uh, as time goes on, especially if they do the right colorways, do the right collabs, and he, you know, he gets the artist involved, like he was saying he was going to do getting all like all these artists to be like a part of the design process mm-hmm. and getting the community to be a part of the, the, the uh, design process. I think that's the way that's the way he breaks in. Like he doesn't need to rush. He can take his time. His looks like, you know, his thing with, with Anta isn't going away anytime soon. So he has the, has the time to really do something special, which I appreciate. Yeah. And at the same time, I, I read somewhere that it's only going to be currently the tribe is going to be exclusive to China. So that does create kind of like, uh, you know, because there's a lot of excitement, I think, for it right now. I think people are actually checking yeah. for it. And it's going to be great for his China fans. But what about for fans here in the States and in other countries, right? Like, should they be making more of an effort to capitalize on, like, the excitement at the moment? Because you never know how, you know, things go. Like, people lose, you know, out of sight, out of mind, that kind of thing. And, you know, may, you know, whenever months from now or a year from now, the Kai Tribe does actually show up and in stores here in America. It's like, oh, that was like a year ago. Like, we're on mm-hmm. to the next thing. So I feel like Anta really needs to like capitalize on the situation right now and try to find a way to get it. Like, you know, they are working with like other online retailers to actually get the shoes stateside, mm-hmm. but I feel yeah. like they need yeah, to yeah. really step up now, now that they have somebody like Kyrie, they really need to step up their presence here in the States. Well, the way, the way that I'm kind of looking at it is um, it's almost like this is the kind of get a little FOMO going, of, mm, you know, sure. Kyrie fans of them wanting it. And mm-hmm. as long as they continue to keep creating interesting looks and interesting styles on the shoe, I think that energy can continue to build. And, you know, it's hard for Chinese brands to break into the U.S. market. And right. Anta, Anta is no exception. You know, D-Wade has been doing it, what, 10 years now or something like that? And he still hasn't been able to really make a dent in the U.S. market and get his shoes on the feet of as many people as possible. So Anta seems like they're kind of stair-stepping on what D Wade was able to do and mm-hmm. you know D Wade and Lee Ning were able to do and now they can really start to really dig in here in the US and start getting uh getting shoes in some different 
retailers. I mean, the, the, the Kai one was in a couple of retailers here in the States. So uh, it, it might, it might open some doors. Yeah. And the difference between D Wade and Kai though, is like D Wade wasn't doing live streams. Um, D Wade wasn't like on socials, like really talking to the fans as much as like Kai is. So that's why, that's right. why I right. kind of felt like maybe Anta needs to maybe pick up the pace just a little bit, but I understand like, you know, it is tough to like, break through and really convince like retailers to stock your your shoes yeah. regardless of who you have like you know uh in your roster you know Kyrie. who's you're endorsing them yeah. yeah yeah i mean they've had clay thompson they have kai now so it, it, like i said like there's still that like hindrance like people sometimes think like oh a foreign brand why would we stock that regardless of who you have on your roster you know so there's definitely yeah. still that that like like that mental block from like retailers but i think with Kai really going out there and really pitching it to the people, like I think it's going to make a huge difference and get people really demanding that it's something that they can buy as simple as like going to a store or as simple as like going to a a retailer that they re- they, they recognize and clicking and buying. So yeah, I think it's just because of the Kai factor. Yeah, the sooner the sooner they can do that, the better for sure. Mm-hmm. The sooner they can do that, the better for sure. But it's just mm-hmm. it's just gonna take. Unfortunately, it's just gonna take time for it to happen yeah yeah uh jacques so but you're gonna be in china um uh you're, you're gonna give me a souvenir right like you're, you're gonna you're gonna give me something though right it's gonna be you know you're gonna you're gonna come back here and you're gonna be like what i got you this thing and it's uh, you know whatever whatever it might be you know like a like a oh Kyrie. yeah 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 you're yeah. gonna do that right yeah 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 you're gonna of course totally get it. of course yeah. of course of course i've <laughs> Yeah, of course I was thinking about bringing you back. You know, something. this is a video thing. I can see your face, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> so I, so I, like, the, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, fully <laughs> intended to bring yeah. something back for you. Yeah, hey, thanks, buddy. I, I, I just wanted to make sure that it was actually going to happen because you know. This... Yeah, yeah, and and you yeah. know, thanks for checking in. Thanks for the reminder. I appreciate yeah, you yeah, reminding I appreciate me. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just wanted to make sure. Oof. Anyways, yeah. um, speaking of, uh, you know, since we're in the China kind of vibe of things, uh, Curry Brand is also in China, right? They're currently doing their China yeah. tour. Steph Curry's in China. And another athlete that is also in China is De'Aaron Fox, who is the first yeah. Curry Brand athlete. And we got a teaser on the socials, uh, on the blogs, of what De'Aaron Fox's signature logo is going to look like. And I got to right. say, Jacques... I am actually excited for it. It actually looks like a real signature logo because I'll, I'll be honest. I have just been so disappointed with the past. I don't know how long it's been decade of, we just find a way to integrate the player's initials and their, their number together and use the negative state negative space to create, you know, that kind of shape. And for the first time in a while, De'Aaron Fox's logo, it's a fox, obviously. Yeah. And also, you can still, I think you can still make out, like, you know, his number or his lo- his initials in there. But I just love yeah. the fact that it's actually using bits of Fox's personality and, you know, his image instead of just yeah. going the lazy route. And no offense to, like, you know, the athletes who have done that. Like, pa- I think it was Paolo Bancaro who had his mm-hmm. signature Jordan logo come out recently. And I was just super not into it it was just something i i just was not really excited about it but this is the opposite though with De'Aaron fox's logo super excited very cool and like i said it's just a neat use of fox's personality and i just think it's a good step and you know curry brand is actually two for two in my opinion because the curry logo Mm. is awesome i really like that curry logo Agreed. And now with Fox, they they're two for two, and I think it's great. Like I think it does. It yeah. actually makes a difference to me, Jacques. I think it actually does make a difference. Like, some. What do you mean by that? Make, well, I think it creates like this excitement, this like aura for the athlete. You know, like because you you know when you see like a KD, like no offense to like the KD logo, or the various LeBron logos through the years, but they really don't do much for me. Like the Kobe, the sheath logo, it kind of it does remind me of the Kill Bill. The, the Kill Bill thing. But, you know, at least it's still, like, something that's... It, it, it's supposed to, like... It's, like, an abstract thing that makes you, like... It, it makes your imagination run wild to a certain degree. Okay. Like, with a, with initials and numbers, it's just... Well, I know what it is. It's just, like, you guys just put it all jumbled together and it blah. That's what it is. 
like with the D Rose logo, that was actually a good implementation of like his initial and his numbers. Yeah. You know, with the ro- the use of the Rose name. So, but, but with the Jordan logos, let's take a look at um, Jason Tatum's. It's just JT. Luca's. It's, yeah. It's a Luca and a seven. Zion's was actually interesting to a certain degree, but it, I also felt it was a little too busy. Um, okay. Just the, the okay. way that it looks like, but with De'Aaron Fox, I just thought, well, okay, it's a, it's a, it's a nice change of pace. It reminds me of like the um the penny logo, the one cent. You know, like I said, mm. it plays into his um you know personality, his image, and you know his yeah. nickname or whatever. So that's why when I see this uh, Curry brand Fox logo, I'm like, oh, it's cool. It's actually something that gets me interested in what's gonna come soon for uh you know the curry fox one or whatever they're gonna call it which i think is still funny to say is like it's gonna be called the curry fox one <laughs> yeah it's the interesting i I like i like the logo but hmm. and here's the rub Here it we go. feels feminine mm. okay if that makes sense um yeah i can see it i can I'm, see that i'm not i'm not mad at it i feel like that sort of pose that it's in for a fox is is a little feminine. I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. mad at it, mm-hmm. and I don't I don't know if people are going to look into it that much as much as I looked at it. You know, being mm-hmm. in the sneaker world, you know, we kind of look at these things and try to, to break them down to any any details that the average person missed by looking at it. And when I was looking at it, I was like, huh, I could see this being a woman's logo as well. Mm. I guess is what I'm saying. Like if if this was a woman's logo, I wouldn't think about it twice, kind of thing. Ah, I see. Yeah. Well, for me, uh, the other thing I also thought when I saw that logo, it was like, wait, kind of looks like the Mozilla Firefox logo. You know, <laughs> it kind of oh, reminds yeah, me of that a to a certain degree. It kind of reminds me yeah. of the Firefox logo, which I do like. I was I wasn't really uh, you know I was actually pretty. It was actually pretty neat. But yeah, uh, I I think it's just for me personally. I I didn't really see it as like a feminine logo. I just thought it was just for me, it was just more I, I was just joyous that it was just different and not yeah. your typical like initial number jersey, you know, number logo just for me just to see something. Yeah, just try something. Just tr- let's just try something brands like just do something yeah. different. And I was just more happy about that more than anything else. Um, the other thing no, I, and I, agree, I agree with you on that point. I think they did a great job. Uh, it just just came off a little feminine to me, but. I don't think mm-hmm. that's just that might just be my eye and the way that I, I looked at the logo. I think oh, it's sure. good. I think it's a good mm-hmm. logo. And like I think the D Rose was probably the best example of that. Like the D Rose logo yes. is still it's still incredible to this day. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely mm-hmm. love that logo. That might and you're right. That might have been the last time both of us were like actually surprised and excited for a signature logo. Cause like I said, it's yeah. just been this 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 like steady stream of logos that just don't inspire a lot of imagine that doesn't spark a lot of like imagination but, excitement for yeah. me. I don't know. That's just how it is. Like I'm a logo like a logo snob, I guess, at the end of the day. A but, logo um, snob. Eh, you know, it is what it, I mean, like here, take a look at the Dreamcast logo. I mean, people who are watching this on the audio, it doesn't really it's just a bunch of swirls, right? But it does inspire like a lot of thought. It doesn't it, it mm. makes you think about like you know in the name the name itself dreamcast like it makes you really think about you know what is possible and it makes you like it just makes you go beyond like it's just oh it's not just a video game it's it's like your imagination run wild that kind of thing so yeah that's why when i look at logos i tend to think of like not necessarily just like you know your name or anything like that it just it's just one of the things that's just always bugged me for the past several years in terms of like athletes just going the low, the yeah. initial and number route. But anyways, um, going back to De'Aaron Fox itself, though, Jacques, um, the logo is nice and I do like it. But are we looking at De'Aaron Fox as somebody who can be like a pillar to the Curry brand, though? I mean, he's an all-star caliber player. The Sacramento Kings are a pretty good team. But are we looking at Fox as somebody who can carry the Curry brand? Or is he more of like... You know, when Jordan Brand started out, they had Eddie Jones, they had Vin Baker, you yeah. know, those athletes. Like, they're great players, all-star caliber talents, no doubt. But I never thought of Jordan. My, Michael Jordan maybe look, never looked at them as like, oh, these are the guys who are going to carry the carry jump the man torch. moving forward, carry yeah. the torch. 
like they're going to be like one of the people like you know they're holding the fort down but they're not necessarily like the ones at the front not like maybe when randy moss came along or Derek jeter came along you know those kind of yeah. those are like they were the best of the best of their profession i mean and i love eddie jones eddie jones is maybe one of my top five favorite Lakers of all time. I'm still not mm-hmm. slightly upset that he, LeBron took his number. <laughs> he took number six yeah. from Eddie Jones, but I don't know that anybody would ever consider Eddie Jones as like the guy who was going to carry Jordan brand, you yeah. know, at the, in, in that ni- or late nineties, two thousands, you know? So is De'Aaron Fox kind of like an, an Eddie Jones type, or is he more of like a, like in your opinion, like a Derek Jeter type? Great question. My, thought would go to an Eddie Jones type player. Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of like a combination of both. Cause he's actually getting a signature shoe. Like Eddie Jones and all those guys didn't necessarily have signature, didn't have signature shoes. They had shoes you know that I mean? were they, like named that, like the quick six, but they weren't necessarily, they weren't named like the Jones or oh, the Jordan yeah. Jones shoe would be funny now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, but this is like Fox getting his own signature line under the Curry brand. Mm-hmm. So this would be, you know, this is more like a Luca Zion sort of sort of situation, mm-hmm. as opposed to a like a Jordan situation. Like if it, we had to, you know, equate it to the Jordan side, this is a Luca Zion Tatum sort of thing, which mm-hmm. is which I think is great for the Curry band and great for Fox. Like Fox is a baller. He he hasn't popped off in a way that makes him like a global superstar. And I think that's kind of what you're getting at. He doesn't have that that global superstar sort of. At the appeal moment. to him at the mm-hmm. moment, which uh, I, which you know could make, could make a big difference, but right now, yeah, I don't I don't mind it. I, I see it like Luca Tatum sort of stuff, where it's like, all right, yeah, cool. They have they have a shoe under Jordan Brand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, it was just one of those things that really struck me as like when I first heard the news that the Air Fox was signing a Curry Brand, I was like, oh, that's cool. But now that he actually has a signature shoe, like I think that's a different kind of pressure, regardless of whether. We look yeah. at him as like a pillar for the brand or as a, you know, just someone who's going to be around for them. You know, it, it's a different kind of pressure. It's a different kind of like, oh, we're really putting yeah. a lot of faith in you. And especially yep. like when Steph is now, I mean, Steph is still like in his relative, like late stages of his prime. He's still definitely like the one that people are going to be looking for when he thinks about when you think about Curry brand. But Fox and maybe whoever else they sign moving forward, like they have to think about like who's going to carry this brand well yeah. after Steph has retired. So I was just thinking about thinking about it in that sense. So Yeah, and Fox is Fox is a good candidate for that. And we'll see. Mm-hmm. Hopefully they sign get a, get a few more folks and really really expand expand what the what the brand is doing. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really going to be the interesting uh point uh you know, touch point for Curry Brand is who after De'Aaron Fox who yeah. are going to be those next next athletes who are like are they going to sign like the next hyped rookie? coming out of the, you know, college or, you know, overseas or something like that. Or, you know, they sign somebody who, you know, maybe ended their deal at another brand or something like that. So I think, yeah, yeah the Curry brand move, I just, I, I have a lot of hopes for Curry brand. I just think with the logo, like, like I said, the logo, the products that they're coming out with, I like the way they look. And I think there's a lot of potential there to really, ju- uh, you know, stand out in the same way that Jordan brand has, you know, stood out from uh, come out of Nike shadow, you know? Yeah, like I think there's really it'll a lot be, of potential It'll be there. interesting to see what happens with Curry brand when Curry retires. Oh yeah, that's where that's when that's where I want to see. Like I'm mm-hmm. I'm interested in seeing how that how that all plays out to the public and the perception of the brand. Yeah, whether it will matter. I mean, ultimately, like whether Curry brand will matter after Curry is Steph retires. Yeah, that's going to be a huge test for them. But I am there. I think they're off to a great start. Just in terms of like the products that they put out, so but ultimately, it the really important thing that's going to happen is what's going to be Curry brand after Steph. So after Steph, yeah. yep, yeah. All right, so moving on, uh, we're going to go into a little bit of a tech talk, Jacques. Uh, we are both tech talk, yeah, tech talk, or well, you know, just general culture stuff. Um, this has been a week of disappointment for me, Jacques. I don't know <laughs> why. This has been just a sad, sad week for me in terms of like tech and gaming, Jock. I, I, why? I don't think I've ever been like this bummed out about like the future of the products that I like, you know, and appreciate mm. and like love and all that stuff. So 
Let's start with the iPhone. The iPhone 16. Uh, it was the big announcement. It was like, get your glow on or whatever it was. Whatever yeah, that glow whole up thing was. Glow time or something like glow that. Glow time yeah. or something like that. Like, they had to, like, use the glow or whatever. And they revealed the iPhone 16. 16 mm -hmm. Pro, Pro Max, and all that. And I came away from that presentation being, is that it? Was that really all there is to it? Um, better yeah. camera. A, the use of Apple intelligence, which is all really creative there, Apple. <laughs> yeah. It was just, I, I just couldn't get behind whatever they were selling. And it's like, oh, we have a new a button, like a shutter. Like, oh, great. It's a shutter. It's a shutter button. Like, what yeah. are we doing here? Like, it, like, and I saw the hands-on. I saw the Verge's hands-on. And none of it really spoke to me. None of it really inspired me to be getting the new iPhone and I've had my, I think it, what is this? The 14 or 13? I forget. I, I, and I've thought to myself, this was going to be the year that I upgrade. I always did like the every other year, every other year. Yeah. yeah. I always had the every other year cadence. And now I still just don't, I did I, nothing about it really just says I'm going to go to Verizon tomorrow or whenever it drops. I think it's like the 20th. Yeah. I think that's when the, sh the phones actually drop. Nothing yeah. about it has really inspired the confidence in me. It's not like the old days. Do you remember the old days of the iPhone, Jacques, when the design would come out and it would be new, the camera would look fresh, and uh, the iOS would look like something that you're, oh, man, I just had no idea they were going to use put this feature in here. Yeah. And nowadays, it's just incremental. And it's just oh, the, what did you drop? What did you drop your water bottle? Oh, oh yeah, it's my a, water bottle. My water no, bottle. That's I was just, acting like it didn't. I was acting like it didn't happen. But no, no, no I'm so. gonna point that out because it's funny. But yeah, <laughs> fine. But yes, no, Jacques. It's just one of those moments where I'm just like, well, have we really reached a point where nothing really can inspire us anymore? Like, what can Apple do at this point to kind of get us excited for their next product? And the same thing happened with Sony. Uh, they had a small video announcing their PlayStation 5 Pro, which a lot of people were checking for because let's be honest, this video game console generation has not really um, excited a lot of people. A lot of people are still yeah. waiting for that killer app, that killer game that's going to get them to finally say, yes, I'm jumping into this generation. And also there were people who were just waiting for the Pro because mm -hmm. they, they, they already had like the PS4 Pro, there was already like a set established, like, okay, this is what we're going to, we're going to have a PlayStation console at the launch. And then a couple of years from now, we're going to release like the half step console, the pro version. So yeah. people were expecting, oh, the five pro is going to be this huge leap and it's going to be priced the same as the base console was when it launched like you know, a couple of years ago. It's just going to, it's going to be just like an iPhone. Like it's just going to be like, this is the new mainline one. And then the ones previous generation are just going to be like, price lower, put on sale and that kind of stuff. But yeah, that's not what happened, Jacques. During that video presentation, which bless his heart, Mark Cerny, I've had the chance to meet him. He's a really good guy. He's very much into the tech and very much like pushing forward and wants to make, you know, the best possible, you know, product for, you know, the consumers, the fans. And at the end of the day, though, the PlayStation Pride Pro just seems like a, not even like a half step. It's like a quarter step. Like they didn't have a game that people like a new game that people can say, oh, this is the game that I need to have to justify right. my PlayStation 5 Pro purchase. Yeah. All they showed were older games and looking a little better. And they, mm. and I thought it was funny. What they did was they would show like these close up shots of, hey, take a look at this thing in the background. In the P PlayStation 5, it was a little blurry. In the PS5 Pro, it's a little clearer. It wasn't really that much of a difference. Like, it doesn't really do much to... Yeah, no. And in order to actually see that kind of fidelity, you also need a fancy television. Like, that's the other thing that's not really spoken of. Is like, yes, we have these consoles that, you know, can look powerful, look amazing. But you also need, like, the complementary television to actually take advantage of those things. Yeah. And yeah, that's and that's the other problem was, like, we, we all of these things just seem not super important yes like people are complaining about like frame rates not being up to snuff and like people having yeah. to choose between fidelity and performance but if we're being quite honest that's such a super like in the weeds kind of thing but for most people they're not even going to notice that stuff but the thing that people are going to notice though is the price this yes. thing is going to be priced at 699 dollars. the playstation 5 right now 
is $499. The expectation was the 5 Pro was going to be $499 and the base PS5 was going to go down in price. But no, Sony's like, nah, we're number one. We don't even, dis I like how we never want to ever count Nintendo in any of these discussions. It's always PlayStation and Xbox, even though Nintendo's really yeah. outselling everybody by like wide margins. But anyways, that's not the point. Sony's like, we can call our shot. Xbox is on the ropes. We can price this however we want. And even if you don't buy the PS5 Pro, if you've been waiting, you're just going to get the base PS5. You know why? Because you're going to need to jump in at some point because Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming out. And that's the game that everybody has been waiting for. Everybody. Yeah, everybody's been waiting for that. And so one way or another, we're going to get your money. And that is old school Sony arrogance. Like this is like PlayStation era, PS3. You are going to get two jobs in order to get a PS, uh, you know, a PlayStation console. And that actually wrecked them for that generation. I mean, though, technically they did win that generation eventually. Like the Xbox built such a huge fan base and you know, got out to like a huge lead during that era. The 360 was like everybody's favorite console. And it took Sony a whole generation to ride the ship. And now they're kind of falling back into that like position of like, we can do whatever we want. And I don't think that's a great thing for the industry. And, and at the same time, it's just not exciting anymore though, Jacques. Like that's the thing is like these new consoles, the new iPhone, there's just nothing there that's inspiring a lot of joy. And I think I've spent like the past five, 10 minutes talking about this, just being disappointed. Jacques, what do you think? What, why, why are we like in this cycle of like disappointment at the moment? Well, I, I'll, I think we, we need to un, unpack things there. I think there's a few <laughs> things we need to unpack. Um, I feel like therapy right now. Yeah. First, we're all jaded. We are so used to so much hype around these things that it's going to be impossible for these companies to keep up with that. And so the, the software and hard, well, I should say the hardware that we have at this point is, is pretty good. Like most it's, you know, I, I want to say, it's not saying it's the top of the line edge of, you know, the edge of, you know, what we should expect, but mm -hmm. it's all really, really good. There's people that have phones from two, three years ago that really don't see that much of a difference than what we have now. Now there have been upgrades and early in the process, there, there was it, part of it is like earlier in the process, there's so much more to upgrade. Like mm -hmm. you can only go so far with some of these things. And so I think we've become, because we're, you know, we use these things every day We're we've kind of become obsessed with the upgrade cycle. And I just, I just don't think that we're ever going to have that wild moment again, because these things aren't new to us. So we'll mm -hmm. never have that wild moment again on the Sony side. I, I was shocked by the pricing as well. I would, I would have thought it would have been 499 and they dropped the price. So to see that it's 699, I, I do think it's a, it's a little bit of arrogance from from the sony side and if it is uh the conspiracy theory i'm going to call it that you're saying that they they price this high so people will just buy the regular the base number five mm -hmm. um it's not a bad it's not a i guess i say business wise i get it if that's the strategy it sucks for the consumer uh because generally yeah. consumers can expect the the prices to go down when they get to that that new when a new console is introduced and the ps5 exactly. Pro is essentially a, a new console step. so yeah. maybe it's a maybe it's a wait thing that you just wait a little longer and the ps5 will eventually go down the price of it maybe that's what like you know around christmas the holidays sometimes they have those sales oh, so yeah. maybe you can get one cheaper then or maybe mm -hmm. next year you can get one cheaper then but mm -hmm. like we mentioned in the show, you're honestly not missing out on too much if you don't have a five or if you don't get the pro, you right. know, there's a couple of things, you know, fidelity wise, performance wise that you might miss out on, mm -hmm. but in general, you're not missing out on, on too much. And I don't know if that's a, we have to, we have to, we have to look at it, whether this is a Sony thing or is this a game developer thing? If mm -hmm. the soft, if the hardware has gotten so good that the efficiency of the software isn't there, you know what I mean? Right. Like the soft or the software has gotten, has keeps out, 
yeah, maybe the software is just so good now that there's nothing on the market that can handle it hardware wise. And so you are going to have these, you know, these small jumps instead of trying to chase it. Sony's just like, we'll just get it better. And they got to work on better code. My, yeah, my yeah. thought is that the hardware is good enough. And the, the issue is more about the efficiency on the software side. Yeah. And the other thing that we have to think about too, is like the games that, you know, most of the, the public play plays now, it's a lot of games that they just play forever. Like a Fortnite. they don't, they're not like our generation, Jacques, which we, we move from game to game. Like, you know, we, we played a game, yeah. we were done with it. If there's multiplayer, like, you know, we still play it like, you know, for extended still months it, with yeah. friends and all that stuff. But for the most part, we play one game, we bang through it, we get through it, and then we just move on to the next thing. Like kids nowadays, they don't. They just play Fortnite. They just play um, anime waifu game, Genshin Impact. I want to know if you understood any of those previous words that I just yep. said. Nope. Nope. Okay. Never played those. <laughs> I don't if you've ever I've seen never those. Yeah, and me neither. But uh, I know enough people who have. And yeah, no, it's an interesting type of anime game. But yeah, um, you know, World of Warcraft, uh, Call of Duty Warzone. Yeah. You know, those are the games that kids are playing nowadays. Minecraft. And they don't really necessarily move on to something else. So that's the other problem. Which is, is that. Which yeah. kind of sucks. That, that part does <laughs> yeah. suck. Cause you they miss you miss out on so much like experience. I remember right. like I had never played a snowboarding game mm -hmm. or had any interest in a snowboarding game until I think it was the sixty four. I forgot the mm -hmm. name of it. Ten eighty and ten eighty and my roommate at the time brought one brought the game home and we started playing and we were instantly addicted. Right. So now, like, that's something that I'll look at more, you know, when I play video games now, like, if I go on a random, like, oh, you know, I'm going to buy something different or look at something different. Like, that's mm -hmm. now part of the lexicon, so to speak, now. So right. I, if you only play one game, you're never really going to get that experience of finding new things and playing new games. So mm -hmm. I, I, I always recommend that you mix it up and not just play one thing. Unless it's kind and of like that's your the job or thing. something, you're trying to do speed runs or some kind of crazy thing like that. Yeah, definitely, that's cool. But yeah, I mean, that's the funny thing about Fortnite is like they want you to never leave their platform anymore. Yeah, yeah, you have like the, yeah. the you know the base Fortnite, which is like you know shooty and all that stuff. But they recently brought in a, a music game mode where you're kind of playing like a Guitar Hero s game. They yeah. added Lego Fortnite, which is kind of like their Minecraft, you know, kind of style of game as well. So, you know, Fortnite is even trying to like do like trying to branch out and trying to get people still engaged with the product. And they're just like, you know, adding other things instead of like, you know, hey, instead of like playing this um, music game somewhere else, why don't you just stay with us and just stay with us? Well, yeah, it, it's, maybe uh... it's good for their business. But I think like you said, you're right. It is kind of a bummer because you, you miss out on that variety of like perspectives and, you know, you miss out on yeah. different styles. So I mean that's yeah, a it's bit very of a much that Elon way of thinking. How Elon wants to turn Twitter into X, the everything, everything app. app where you can do everything. Yeah. Like I don't want you to do everything. I just want you to be good at the one thing you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And let us have like you know have the confidence in us as a people that we can like you know move on and like you know try other things. You know instead of like trying to keep us like you know in your ecosystem your bubble or whatever yeah which, you know i guess it's kind of like what the apple what apple does is you want us to stay in like their ecosystem but at the same time it's like yeah it's a little bit different because they're trying other they yeah have, like, the other products it's a little different yeah, it's a little different it's, yeah it's a little it's a, it's a little bit different now if fortnite wants to turn itself into a um what is it not stream not steam deck um goodness why am i having this uh where you d download the games Steam. Is it Steam? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, well, they Steam. do. No. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No. If they, um, Fortnite they wants to own... turn themselves into a Steam, then that's that's a little little different. Where well, Fortnite they kind of do. They have a game. Like yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no. They have, like, their own, like, uh, they have their own game store, Epic Games. So yeah. they have, like, their own kind of, which hasn't really been as successful as Steam. So there you go. Like you said, like, you know, if they tried their own Steam... Yeah, and it ended up not being as like super successful as like you know uh, Steam or any other like different kind of app store. So, yeah, I, it, it's we we need that variety. We need to have that variety, and we need to have these companies really try to like 
get us back into that mode of like, yes, we are in that, in that kind of era of like nothing really surprises anymore, but I'm still holding out hope that, you know, there are companies out there who are really, really trying to give us that wow factor. Now, that being said, though, I have had friends who are like, you know what it is, Juan? It's because you're an iPhone person. And I'm like, shut up, green bubble. <laughs> what, is that? what does that have to do with anything? They want me to move on to like the Androids and like the Gal Samsungs and all that stuff, and I'm just I mean, like, but those are just as those are those steps are just incremental as well. Same, so that, they, that's, it's that's, not like that was my argument too. It's like they're not different. Yeah, yeah they're they're not that was my argument too. Radically different. That was my argument too. Is like they're not really doing anything anything different. That's you know really mind blowing or anything like that, features wise or anything. But yeah, ah uh, yeah, this was a bit of a downer of a segment, Jock, but. <laughs> Let's yeah, move on they're to doing flip little... phones. Oh yeah, have, have you seen <laughs> yeah, that, like have a... you seen the have you seen like the new Galaxy Flip ad or whatever? And like they hold their their phones now like their camcorders when they record video. Like, have you seen that? And I'm like, what is that supposed to be? Some like Gen Z millennial, like Gen late millennial thing where people it's are nostalgia. like nostalgia. They they try to they're trying to get you to <laughs> they're trying to get you back. That's all. I was so blown away by that. I'm like, there are people who actually hold their flip phones like that, record video like their cam, like old school camcorders, man. Like what? Yeah, at least that's what the commercial. T that's what the commercial tells us. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, like, uh, uh, yeah. There's this whole like new generation of kids who are like going back to like what we used to grow up with, and we were like, yeah, these are cool, but I wish we could like move forward and like you know move on to like the future and everything. But yeah, move on to I, something I, better. Yeah, yeah, move on to something better. Like the, the, at some point, they'll also realize like what we got right now is pretty good. And but also yeah. now we're like also the, the uh, we need to get also get better. But anyways, let's talk about something a little bit more cheery, Jacques Kendrick Lamar, which nobody ever associates cheery with Kendrick Lamar, but he did make uh, headlines this week. Well, yeah, eh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. He did no, make no, it's exciting. Yeah. He yeah, is I, think going it's, to I think it's cool. Super Bowl headliner. He's going to be headlining the halftime show. And I believe this is a huge win for Kendrick in a lot of different ways. And also it's maybe like just the final um, shot at Drake. Because, you know, I think he said in his like the, the way that he promoted it was like no, no round twos or something like that. He sensed something to that degree. Yeah. And it was like, well, okay, I guess he's still not over it. <laughs> Number one. And mm -hmm. number two, yeah, I, I think Kendrick won. Kendrick won, not only just won this feud with Drake, but won the year. Because he's pretty much established 2024 as the year of the, uh, the uh, I guess, the year of the hater. <laughs> yeah. Where, you know? Um, what do you think, though, Jacques? Like, what do you think about, well, what do you think, first of all, like Kendrick headlining the Super Bowl? I think that's awesome. Kendrick is an incredible performer. Uh, I've mm -hmm. had the chance to see him at a couple of festivals. And so mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing how he brings that Kendrick, like kinetic type energy that he has in his songs, mm -hmm. how he brings it into real life at a Super Bowl in a place like that. I think it's going to be exciting. I think we're going to have some crazy special guests, which, which will be exciting as well. And as far as the Drake stuff goes, I think this kind of further establishes the differences between the two when it comes to the art form mm -hmm. uh you see kendrick as more of like the artist and really looking to expand the art form and grow the art form whereas drake in this scenario has seemed more about himself and growing himself and growing his brand whereas kendrick feels it feels like with kendrick that it's more about the community and the culture and the music and mm -hmm sharing that in the most creative and get, in engaging way possible. Right. Now, speaking of the community, though, Jacques, like I saw some uh, news bits about Lil Wayne being upset or not mm -hmm. maybe being slightly disappointed that he's not the one who's going to be on the halftime show. Um, I guess because the Super Bowl is going to be, I believe, in New Orleans. Yeah, in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. And I believe there's, uh, you know, there's, you know, obviously the huge, you know, scene, the rap scene down in down south. And maybe Lil Wayne was like, if anybody's going to represent for the South, it should be Lil Wayne. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily like well versed in like, you know, the locations and all that stuff. You know, I know like Outcast is from the South and all that stuff. But like, like, do you think like Wayne has a point, though? Or is this like because, you know, we had the L.A. Super Bowl. We had Dre. We had Snoop. We had Kendrick on there. 
So, you know, maybe that was like the beginning of Super Bowl locations and the halftime show being tied to like people who are actually from that location. Like, mm-hmm. was that really the start of it? And like now that has people thinking, oh, if the Super Bowl is going to be held here, we need to have like artists that represent that region. But, you know, because Kendrick is going to be the headliner and because he's from the West Coast, do you feel like the South, uh, you know, the Southern rap, you know, area has like a legitimate like reason to be upset? Or do you think like this is all going to be resolved at some point and Little Wayne and everybody else is going to end up being like a guest at some point during the show? <laughs> I understand why they are upset, the people from the South, the musicians mm-hmm. from the South. I think the South has this almost little brother feeling when it comes mm. to hip hop music, even though they're probably mm-hmm. the biggest music now, they kind of have this little brother sort of like, I'm always getting looked over. No one respects me, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. And I think this just fuels that, I don't want to call it paranoia, but that this way, that way of thinking kind of fuels that way of thinking for them. Mm-hmm. Should would Lua Wayne be great for the show? I'm sure. I'm sure he would be. Mm-hmm. That I don't. I don't doubt that at all. But it's also. I think. It's in the South, but this is a bigger thing than the South, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, because the Super Bowl is such a, uh, you know, American worldwide, wide, worldwide, yeah, wide sensation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like. I don't know. I don't know if I don't. I don't know if the NFL trust that the performance of someone of a Little Wayne would meet the scale of what they want for the Super Bowl. Whereas with mm-hmm. Kendrick, I think we can see the artistic sort of vision for that and how much bigger that would be. That being mm-hmm. said, you know it's rumored that the city makes the final decision on who's going to perform Jay-Z mm. and the NFL and a few other people, they make recommendations and then the city ultimately decides on who is actually going to do the performance. Oh, so okay. it's, you know, it's not just like one person does it. There's a committee that kind of picks. And if that committee picked Kendrick, there's a, there's a reason why they, you know, they didn't pick Wayne when we, we mm-hmm. that we miss it, that we may not know. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of decisions that we're, you know, obviously not privy to. So there's definitely yeah. a lot of, of like discussions about this. This wasn't just like, you know, a Jay Z called up Kendrick was like, hey, do you want to do this? And then boom, we have like a right. video. Or yeah, something yeah, like yeah. That, right. It, now, a lot of that's like, the way a lot uh, of people are making it seem. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely a lot of like dealings behind the scenes that, you know, we will probably never know about um, that led to this decision. And at the same time, though, I feel like if anybody was going to, you know, be a Super Bowl halftime show lead, you know, headliner in 2025. It had to be the guy who really made 2024 his year, Kendrick. Like, yeah, Kendrick. remember back in the days when people looked at the Super Bowl halftime show as like, a, like a career achievement. Like, yeah. you know, it was more for like the older bands or older artists and all that stuff. And now it's becoming like more younger, more like current. And yeah. do you feel that that's a good thing though, Jacques? Like, do you feel like we're we're in a good spot in terms of that? Like, do you feel like the Super Bowl's halftime show should be like, or do you think like like the old days were a little bit better, where it was like older bands, older groups were like the ones headlining it, and now, but now it's becoming more current. Like, what do you feel about that though? Well, I like that it's becoming more current. Mm-hmm. I, I I do think there is a place where some of those older, uh, like more like the more veteran bands could veteran bands could perform. Because mm-hmm. I think there's value there as well. But the NFL has to balance the nostalgia factor versus getting younger generation to watch. And right. I think that's where they that's where why you've seen the artists that you've seen. But I mean, if we think about it, last one was Dre, Snoop, Fifty Cent, and Eminem, who aren't they're not super hyper relevant now. Se. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not current per se, but they are you know, they're more I would consider them veteran legacy artists as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, no, last question, though, about uh, the halftime performance. Uh, how many times do you think he's going to play Not Like Us? How do you think? Oh, just once. Just once. <laughs> and let's just be once. honest, though, that's going to be tough to, like, edit the song, though, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, you know, he knows what he has to say. He knows how to get Oh, I know. It. Like, 
I know people are talking about like how is he gonna edit the song, but like if anybody's gonna have the ability to do so, it's probably gonna be Kendrick. Like he's gonna find definitely a way to Kendrick. get. Yeah, he's gonna definitely find a way to shoehorn his um shots at Drake in there, regardless of you know whatever whatever like um uh whatever hara- whatever ways that the Super Bowl is gonna try to block whatever it is Kendrick's gonna. Oh try. yeah, he'll he's he'll gonna... get it. He'll get it done. He'll get, he'll it, get done. it done. I don't I don't doubt it at all. <laughs> Well, anyway, Jacques, um, good episode, good episode of the podcast. Yeah. But before we go, though, and before we uh, send you off to China, not that I'm bitter that I'm not going, that- even though I just found out about it today, <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do our Air Jordan 3 Sneaker Mount Rushmore Plus. Yes. Apologies for last week. We had to do the phone posits because, you know, that was the part of the show. But now we are back on the regular schedule Jordans for now. Uh, so today we're going to be doing Air Jordan 3 Sneaker Mount Rushmore Plus, which again is going to be one OG, one not OG, one collab, one player exclusive, and one wildcard. So five sneakers, hence why we call it Sneaker Mount Rushmore Plus. So, plus. <laughs> Jacques, you started uh, last, I don't know, I started last week. So today mm-hmm. you have the honors of going first. So what is your OG colorway of the Air Jordan 3? Black cement, no question. Damn it! <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> I knew it. There's no other choice. No I, other um... choice. Ah, I knew you were gonna do it. I... Man, there's no. You can't even come up with anything else, right? There's nothing really. So I have to go with the white cement. That's really. I mean, you don't have to. You own... can do black cement too. You can do black cement. We can have the same one. No, no, no. I want to. I want to make it different because I. I think it makes it interesting more interesting for the poll. Is like if we have gotcha. like different sneakers. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go with the white cement and just look at you, give you the side eye when you get when you pick the black cement because. Which is fine. I'm okay with that. Ugh. Anyways, non OG colorway, Jacques. Non OG. Now this one is probably where I'm going to lose some people. It's the uh the animal print one. Uh, I don't remember Ooh. the the name of it. I remember that. Print. I remember that one. I think you wore that to like a um like a show or something or uh yeah I did some stuff for the Suns. Yeah yeah I yeah yeah. It. I think that's what that was. Yeah. So this one, this will be my non OG. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's the memory attached to it too, obviously. So yeah, I mean, and it's I think it's, it's a, good, a cool looking I, shoe. Yeah, it's a cool looking shoe. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and so yeah. I mean, between that and the memory that you have attached to it, I think it's a good choice. Yeah. Some people are just gonna have to like Google it though. Like, wait, what does he mean by animal? <laughs> yeah, the animal print. I forgot what the actual name of it is though. Yeah. So for my non OG colorway, it's going to be the uh, Sport Royal, which is basically the black cement colorway but blue. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I remember getting that and thinking to myself, wait, these are basically just the black cements instead of red, though. It's blue. So I can't really hate on that. <laughs> yeah. So if if Jordan had actually started his career out with a team that was blue, that would have been what the black cement would have ended up looking like. So that's always my justification for it. I always thought it looked cool. I just wish it had yeah. Nike Air on the back. But anyways, yes. So my non color colorway is going to be a Sport Royal. Uh, for All your right. collab is going to be... Collab. Um, I think I'm gonna go with the recent, a recent one, the Ama Manier, the the Ooh. most recent version, the 10 year anniversary the, one, the, the while, while you were sleeping. sleeping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. I think I'm going with that one for the collab. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Wish I could get a pair of those. That's not resale, but. <laughs> so, so I mean, yeah, I think collab- you can. I don't. That they didn't sell out. I think you can get a pair. I don't think oh, they, really? I don't, they uh, yeah, I don't think they sold out. You should probably be able to get a pair without any oh, too much of a hassle. everything sells out when it comes to Amma Manier, so. But um no. for my collab, I'm going to go with the uh fragment, the blue and white one, the one that I uh, never actually released. Um okay. but yeah, no, it's another one of those. Uh it's just the traditional style like, you know, but it has like the fragment branding, so I've always liked that. So that is going okay. to be my I like collab. That. I respect that. My other alternate would have been the Dornbecker, but Mm. yeah that's a good one fragment i think the fragment i think we'll go with the fragment with this one so for your player exclusive Jacques, um this one was tough because there's three that come to mind mm, okay uh i think i'll go with georgetown 
Georgetown. Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. Very, very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah, there's a lot to pick from. That's the thing with the threes is that there's a lot yeah. of variety with those. For my PE, though, since you're going with a Georgetown, I'm going to go with another college. I'm going to go with the Oregon Pit Crews, the black ones. Yeah, I know. I figured, so, I figured that's what it was. I was like, yeah. that's that was like, because it was, it was either the Oregon, the UNC, or Georgetown. Yeah. Like, those were the three that were in my head when it came to PEs. Yeah, and they're all good. Like, you can't really go wrong yeah. with any of them. So, yeah. so I just had to counter your Georgetown, which, you know, I, maybe I would have picked that one if you had gone with the yeah. Oregons. So, yeah, no, I'm going to go with the the black uh, Oregon pit crew ones. I, I like that. First time I, like I saw that. those, I was like, super cool, man. Just, just the, the idea that a college would get like a exclusive like that is just so, it's just it's a cool idea to me. Yeah. Um, and now the wild card. What will be your uh, wild card, Jacques? Uh, hold on. Let me look up the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this one's I a little bit tougher. Name. I forgot and there's the a title. lot of investment. Yeah, and there's a lot of investment in us because we're both big fans of the threes. So I feel like yeah. with this oh, one, I, it's I like... thought it had a name. Uh, I'm gonna go with the, mm. the Dornbecker three, the most recent one with the uh, like the slime on it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, was yeah. it the one? Yeah, was it like it's like a Seahawks color or something? Yeah, like, like that? the Seahawks colorway, like the Dornbecker yeah, 19, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. So oh, okay. that's the one I'm gonna yeah. go with. I had a that's a good I, one. Is, I had a couple of other ones, but I think I'm going to go with that one just because I love the Dornbecker program so much. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, definitely. Like, it's a, it's a staple of, like, you know, Jordan retros. Is like almost every one of the older Jordans have, like, the OG Jordans have, like, a Dornbecker collab at this point. Yeah. And for my wild card, though, I'm going to go with um, the Kobe's. Uh, the, the Kobe oh, Bryant okay. PE. The, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, That's a yeah. Good one. That's yeah, so one. also when Kobe retired, he also received like a special package from Jordan Brand, like, you know, the three, the three in particular. So I'm going to go with that one. So, yeah. I like that. Um, th That's a good choice. Yeah. A good choice. And also, it's a nice variety for us. Like, we have very, like, except for the OG, which, again, I'm yeah. upset about because you had to go first. I was like, he's going to pick the Black Cement. He's going to pick the Black Cement. I know he's going to pick the Black Cement. And he yeah, did. I, I like, just, even, even if you would have went first, I would have still picked the Black Cement. I just, that's just, <laughs> there's no, that's my that's my favorite when it comes to the Jordan 3s, period. Yeah, it's untouchable, untouchable. But yeah, no. So, uh, yeah. good, good, good sneaker Mount Rushmore flush, Jacques. Uh, I think we yeah. had like a good variety there. And um, yeah, so for people on the socials and on the comments, definitely go, uh, Vote on that. See which one you like better. And if you have your own personal sneaker, Mount Rushmore Plus, let us know. Uh, on the Instagram, I believe the last poll that we had, we ended up being tied. So you can't do your bit about congratulating people again. It's tied. Oh, <laughs> that's too bad. That's too bad. It was a tie. It was a tie. It, it happens. Tie. It happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. This time, you know, we'll, I, even I can't do the bit. So uh, for this one, though, I feel like, you know, yeah, no, either it could go either way with this one. I think it could go either way. Yeah, I, I honestly, I think you're going to win this one just because of the Oregon, Oregon ones. But we'll see. Yeah, the Oregon. We'll see it. how it goes. The Oregon ended we'll up see. being like a really good one. But anyways, yes. Uh, yeah, no good episode for Too Hard to Pass, Jock. Um, if you have any questions, if you want us to do like, you know, answer or something or you have any whatever you want us to talk about, leave us an email. It's going to be too hard to pass podcast at gmail.com. Too hard to yep. pass podcast at gmail.com. There'll be a graphic at the bottom so you know uh, where to send that. So, but yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music. Leave us five stars, leave a good review. Trying to build this, trying to make this like, you know, a thing, a thing for us. Uh, you know, Jacques, uh, he's like, you know, everybody's favorite podcast guest host, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, That's you know, funny. this is, this is like the, 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 the podcast for, uh, Jacques, this is the home of Jacques Slade podcast and the all home, that stuff. The home of Jacques Slade podcast. There you go. Yeah. 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 So definitely give us a good review and all that good stuff. Yes. Yeah, so again, um, I am Juan Martinez at EZville, E-Z-Y-V-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. Apologize to all of my uh, friends and people who follow me because I've just been posting clips of the podcast. But hey, this is your chance to see me because I haven't had a chance to see a lot of people <laughs> in a while. There so you go. I've, gotten a, there I've you go. gotten a lot of text ever since I started posting clips again. They're like, oh, Juan's back. Oh, hey, how you doing, man? Well, I haven't seen you in a while. Alive. I'm like, you're alive. You know, Welcome. Yeah, yeah. You know, you could just call or you could That's text funny. me. You didn't have to like wait for me to start posting and get on the socials. But yeah, no. So uh yeah, on the socials at Easyville and Jock. 
You can find me at Gusto, K-U-S-T-O-O, all over the internet and all of the places. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching the podcast or listening to the podcast. And uh, we will see, talk, listen, hear, holla at you next week. Yes. Peace. We out. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, 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 pew